Cervical cancer has impacted almost every aspect of my life. My job, my marriage, my mental health at stages. Because I had an aggressive form of cervical cancer, uh, the best option was to cut my uterus in half. And it was quite scary as a 26 year old to have your, what felt like your womanhood cut out. Um, and to be told that when I came round, I might be infertile. So it was just surreal to be able to have a baby despite the odds. My story was lucky, but it could have been very different for me. And I really want to get the message out there that this is something that we can prevent. Cervical cancer is such an interesting story because while there are 250,000 women who die from this cancer every year, it is indeed both preventable and able to be diagnosed early. Cervical cancer is caused by the human papillomavirus or HPV and there are lots of different types of HPV. The key discovery was that some of those types of HPV can cause cancer at a variety of sites in both men and women. And then that's led directly to the development of a vaccine and directly to HPV as a better screening test for cervical cancer. We also know that HPV is implicated in head and neck cancers and in anal cancers and that the vaccination of girls initially and then boys would really reduce the prevalence of this infection and its associated cancers in our community. If we get rid of papillomavirus infection, we will stop a quarter of a million deaths worldwide every year from cervical cancer, a hundred thousand deaths worldwide every year from the other cancers that are caused by papillomavirus infection. Australia was the first country in the world to introduce a national HPV-based vaccination program and it's now the first country to introduce HPV-based screening in a population of women that have received the HPV vaccine. So instead of looking for the cellular changes associated with pre-cancer, we're looking for the viral infection that causes those changes, and that is a much earlier event in the pathway to developing cancer. Countries like Australia are really looking imminently now at the potential for elimination of cervical cancer, but the real challenge is to deliver these innovations where they're needed the most to help protect against the 600,000 cases happening every year, predominantly in low and middle income countries. Just imagine, just imagine that a patient who is just 25 years old, got married recently, has not given birth at all, then all of a sudden presents with bleeding and you know the patient is going to die. You are trained to save lives, but here's the case, most of your patients are dying within six months. You are telling the patient that, oh, the best thing I can do for you is to stop the bleeding or avoid the pain that you are going through. You see this incredible contrast between countries like Australia who are set to eliminate cervical cancer as a major health program versus low income countries where there's just no effective services at all from vaccination or screening perspectives. The rates are rising. They're rising most in low development index countries or women in poor and marginalised communities. We need to address this equity divide. The really good news is that this virus only infects humans and therefore if we had a successful immunisation programme we could not only prevent the cancers but eventually eliminate the virus entirely. The challenge of course is to get universal immunisation. There needs to be a global initiative to get rid of papillomavirus infection. It needs to start from the top, start from the World Health Organisation that are very keen to achieve this. It then needs to flow down through the aid agencies to make sure that the vaccine is available in the countries where cervical cancer is common, such as Sub-Saharan Africa and indeed many of the developing world countries. We're losing a woman every two minutes and this should not happen, especially when we have all the weapons we need to fight it. We need resources, in addition to, of course, the support that we can get from the international community. If we can deliver 200 million doses of vaccine in 10 years, we can immunise the whole population over the next 30 or 40 years and reasonably expect that within my children's lifetime we'll have no more cervical cancer.
We're delivering vaccines to young pre-adolescents. The peak age of risk is in the 40s and 50s and beyond, so it will take time to have an effect. In the meantime, cervical screening has an incredibly important role to protect, in fact, the hundreds of millions of women who are already exposed to HPV and who are already at risk globally. So the key message is that HPV vaccination and cervical screening initiatives have to work together and be scaled up together in low and middle income countries. We are encouraging countries to think across the care continuum. Vaccination, screening to find precancerous lesions, but also follow up of early cancers so that they can benefit from cure through surgery and radiotherapy and offering palliative care for advanced cancers. All countries can achieve this. We stand by you and are ready to help you achieve elimination. We have the tools, but we call on governments of all persuasions to take those tools and implement them with full commitment. Failure should not be an option. 